All right, scraping versus automation. Uh, I promised to you to tell you something also about scraping. Uh, what is scraping? Uh, scraping is usually taking systematically some information from usually the web or from from some applications, and uh, those information are usually somehow structured. Uh, why why to do that? Yeah, uh, I, I would say the first question especially for you because a lot of people heard this buzzword like there is some kind of scraping and so on and uh yeah so of uh, the question is why to scrape the first thing is i would say do you really need to scrape by the way the answer to maggie here on linkedin uh, the recording will be available. Yeah, uh, you are watching that on LinkedIn, so you will see uh, you will see the recording of this uh, in the full length after that, or on my YouTube profile, it's going to be there as well. So imagine, for example, I have here this, yeah, and which is some structured data. Uh, it's a list of companies, and maybe for some reason uh, you would like to have it on your hard drive because. Uh, you will be working more with that and so on. Yeah? So do I need to use some tool to scrape this? Like it's how many? It's like 100 results. I would say in general, uh, even if, if you need to like retype it, in this case, uh, it, might be, it might be the best option. Anyway, in this case, you can actually easily uh, Copy paste it. Yeah, so I could like copy paste it like that. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, you can't see that right right now. So I was here, and I was describing if it's necessarily when you have this list of companies, if you need scraping for this. Yeah. Uh, so in this case, probably not because I can just copy paste it like this and Control C or Command C if we are on Mac. And you can go, for example, to Excel and copy paste it here, yeah? and you have it here. Yeah. So usually scraping is used firstly when it's really in in bulk, in some volume. Yeah. So uh, when we have the list of companies having, uh, for example, thousands of, uh, of of items here on the list over several pages, so it's not easily uh, copy pasteable. You would make you would may consider scraping. Another way for scraping is, for example, a lot of people uh, are telling me that they need to scrape the LinkedIn results. Yeah. Why? Why? Why do you need to scrape the LinkedIn results? Like have it somewhere like here. Uh, is this more, I would say, user friendly environment for you to work with? If yes, maybe then then you want to scrape it. Yeah. But. It, you really need to think of it's if that's really the case. In some cases, for example, here, when you want to scrape all members of a Facebook group and filter them by location, uh, you, for example, need scraping yeah, because it's not possible to do that otherwise. Imagine uh, in Facebook groups, imagine some huge Facebook group yeah, where there is 50,000 uh, 50, of members globally. Yeah, so some people from Europe, uh, USA, and so on, and so on, and so on, Asia, and so on. Yeah. So when you go through the through the group members on a Facebook on a website, you have a total mishmash of uh, different nationalities. Yeah. So it's it doesn't make sense actually to do that. Yeah, because when you are focused, for example, on Germans, only one per twenty will be German. Yeah. You would like to have a list. With members of these, uh, with members from this group, but only Germans. Yeah, how to do that? So you can use Phantom Buster. You already, you already know this tool, where you can use Facebook Group as Extractor. Facebook Group Extractor is a Phantom, which is like the small application, the small API, uh, which is going to scrape any Facebook group and put those people into. Excel, yeah, into a CSV file. Yeah. So when you do this, then you can take this as 
this output from the uh, Facebook group abstractor and you can put it as input into Facebook profile scraper, which is another uh, phantom from Phantom Buster. And it's going to enrich the data from the from the uh, from the first uh, step, yeah. Because this Facebook group structure, the output I think is just the the link, uh, the URL to the uh, to the Facebook user, yeah. But here, instead of having just the URL to Facebook user, you will have also other like education, experience, and by the way, location as well. So instead of having just URLs, you will have all the other information to those people, of course, to the extent what they have on their profiles. And then it's just a work with, with Excel, actually, with Microsoft Excel, where you can create some filters on lo uh, location and you can filter out Germans only. And then, of course, for you, it's suitable to work with that output. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible. Yeah? So as you can see, sometimes, uh, of course, this is also a problem of a, of a volume, let's say, uh, because if there is, I don't know, 500 people in a, in, the, in a group, you could do that manually, like one by one, German, not German, German, not German, German, not German. Yeah? But with 50,000, it's not possible to do that anymore. Yeah? So uh, that's what you can do. LinkedIn profile scraper, the same thing with LinkedIn. Of course, it's a question when what are the cases where you need to scrape people from linkedin linkedin results yeah maybe you would like to use it as input for some other uh some other tools maybe yeah uh but it's possible technically it's possible technically it's also possible with uh this is not a phantom buster this should be uh link it uh link it helper this is link it helper so with Kind of all the tools we described, Phantom Buster, LinkedIn Helper, uh, it's possible to scrape from LinkedIn. If you want to scrape from anything else, like any website, uh, you can use, for example, a plugin which is called Data Miner. Uh, Data Miner, it's a plugin. Again, it's a plugin. There are more tools like this, but this is kind of, I would say, standard already in this category. Uh, which you can use and uh, let me check so this was this was the list uh, 100 biggest companies in Washington so as you can see here for example here is the list largest manufacturing firms yeah so you would like to for example have the list you can actually have the list for 37 dollars here you can purchase the CSV as you can see so CSV is some list you can you can expect that uh, you are going to open it in Microsoft Excel, for example, or in some spreadsheet uh, kind of application. So we can see just the five from the list. We cannot see more. But this is already a structure which we could actually potentially scrape yeah, when we have more results. Uh, I found some uh, on goodfirms.co, uh, the list of companies, for example, here in Seattle, and as you can see, there is some list of companies with also some information here, number of employees and so on. And maybe you are creating some database for business development and uh, you would like to have this uh, in your database. Maybe it's Excel, maybe it's Pipedrive, maybe it's anything else, Salesforce and so on. Uh, but you would like to get this this information from this website in the structured form into your database. So what do you can do? So data miner. Data miner is plugin, so it works on the top of this uh, website uh, where I can actually open it. And you create here so-called recipes. Yeah? And those recipes are like small, as you can see, I already created here some recipes for different kind of websites. So I can create a recipe where this is how it looks like yeah uh just let me check yeah okay you can see it problem let's close this yeah so here you will choose if it's a list page or detail page list page is this it's a list detail page would be already the detail for example of one company where there are a lot of 
for example, a lot of attributes uh, you would like to scrape. But this is a list page. Okay, so it's all right. Rows. Uh, so rows, imagine those are the rows of the Excel file. Yeah, those are here like the, like the rows. So uh, when you click here into the, into, the, uh, into the input field and hit shift button, sorry, uh, ju just click in, in, or click find, for example, and here you would go here, you can see that suddenly uh, these HTML elements are being selected. Yeah? I I'm going just over and you can see like that. So here with, uh, with the scraping on the web, you really need to think in HTML, even if you, you cannot program in HTML. Yeah? But HTML is, uh, it, it's, it's a markup language uh, where, for example, uh, Alex, some company Alex, imagine that something like in Microsoft Word, Word uh, this would be a headline. So in HTML, there are some marks that it will mark this is a headline. Yeah, then it will mark this is a paragraph. This and so on. Yeah, so uh, it, it's like onion. Yeah, going uh, when you are peeling onion. So for example, here when I go here, this the whole tab is actually for me a row. I want to have this as a row. So when I mouse over it and hit shift, as you can see, something happened here and I need to choose which element, usually there is a div. Uh, when I click on div, as you can see, there are many items selected on the website. So it's not that, yeah. When I click on service entity, that's probably it. As you can see, just uh, the tabs selected right now are exactly the whole tabs uh, with the company. So that's it, confirm. That's my row, perfect. And now I want columns. Yeah? So I have rows and now I'm going after columns. So in the, into the, a column, uh, I want to put there, for example, name of the company, link to the company, number of employees and our rate and location, for example. Yeah? So we can name, for example, diverse column name or company name and so on. Uh, what time of the, of the format uh, of the content it is? It's probably text. Yeah. I click text, find, I'm going over here and click shift. I have shift. And when I click here on this, nothing. When I click here, as you can see, just, uh, it's, it's not that visible, but just the names of the companies are being selected. Yeah. So that's probably it. I click on that and I can actually, I can confirm and I can check if I'm right or wrong, yeah, I can I can go to this I, click on that, and uh, as you can see, there is some Alex visit website and so on. I could do that. I could do that even better yeah, because, as you can see, there is some visit website and so on. So it's it wasn't exactly the element uh, I wanted. Yeah, I go here. It's probably not not it as well. When it's not here. Uh, you need to use these arrows up and down to find the element you want. Yeah. So, for example, now I clicked once, as you can see, and only logos of the companies uh, have been selected. Yeah. Because one part of the column can be also uh, can be also a picture. Yeah. So you can download those pictures as well. Yeah. So, and with this, uh, you need to work till you have your recipe. Uh, then with the navigation, you put there also how to get, how this robot can get to the next website. Yeah? Because here, as you can see, there is some pagination here. So you can say, hey, uh, you will get there uh, to the next page with, with this button. Yeah? So it will be incorporated as well. Some websites are a scroll base. So you are scrolling down and down and down and it's extending uh, the website, so you can do that with actions. Yeah, you have infinitive, uh, infinite scroll here, so it will be scrolling as much as possible, or it will be scrolling for three seconds and so on. Yeah, so there are some other uh, like items like this uh, which you can use, and then you can save it. Uh, let me just open 
uh, the recipe I already created for this. I hit run. So when you hit run, you can see this is the result. Yeah, I already did it before uh, where I have name of the item. As you can see, there is the Alex and other, other names, number of employees, website, and logo. Actually, a link, link to the logo. Yeah? I can download it as, for example, XLS or CSV. It really doesn't matter for me right now. And save it. And then when you open it, let me open it. Uh, okay, now I'm, I'm not opening that in the, uh, in the Excel, but this is the result. So it's almost the same uh, when we open it right here, open. So, yeah, so this is the result. So we scraped the Seattle-based companies uh, from that category and we have this CSV file uh, where each row is name of the company, number of employees, link uh, to the website uh, and link to logo. Yeah, And this uh, output you can use for whatever you need. Yeah, so this is this is the scraping. I would say this is the fundamentals of scraping with the data miner. You can do quite a lot of job.